David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part-time job in the Royal Options Trading Academy. Let's go into the weekend stock market talk for August 21st, 2022. Looking at S&P index seasonality, what we see is that August, from a seasonal standpoint, normally ends off very strong, going into a bullish pattern. And then what we do is we look for September to be a little bit more bearish or sell off. Now, we're in a kind of weird period right now. A lot of volatility in the market. A lot of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, choppiness in the market. And that's why we want to continue to observe it. Because what we've seen is that because of 2020, a lot of the seasonality really has not been consistent. We saw that this year, we saw a massive sell-off earlier in the year, which didn't really fit our seasonality trends because it went all the way through April, May, and even June. But what we've seen is a little bit of a recovery over the past four to six weeks. And we want to see, do we continue to maintain that recovery? Or does the market start to leg down again? And that may happen in September. Going into the earnings for this week, not a, it's a lot of companies reporting, but a lot of not of the big heavy names. Definitely going to be looking at Zoom. I want to see if Zoom, um, I'm, I'm bearish on Zoom and that's not investment advice because I don't think the work from home revolution is as widespread as what people anticipated. And then if they don't, I don't, I think if they don't report an increase in their enterprise accounts, I think it could damage people's perception of their future growth, right? Zoom, we may have to admit that Zoom has hit a, a, a growth wall where they're going to be a company that can maintain, but they're really not going to grow any larger than what they've done over the past one or two years. But we got to wait to see how they report. Macy's, Intuit, Dick Sporting Goods, so we're going to get a lot of consumer discretionary Advanced Auto Parts, Dole, Smuckers, uh, Lazy Boy, uh, going into Petco on Wednesday, NVIDIA, Salesforce, Snowflakes, a lot of the big uh, SaaS firms are going to report Wednesday after the close. A lot of people believe that Snowflake is overpriced in comparison to its value. Victoria's Secret, Guess, Thursday Peloton, there's really nothing going to be special there. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, those are going to be interesting because they're consumer discretionary. And we want to see as people have left the larger retailers and moved more into the dollar stores, a firm after close, Dale, Gap. We see that Kanye West could not save that brand. Uh, Burlington, Abercrombie & Fitch. Let me see what else. TD Bank and then Friday, Jinko Solar. Decent earnings week, but not, uh, not most of the heavy hitters and most of the big names are gone. But well, we still got some pretty well-known names coming out this week. Going to the U.S. economic calendar, what we're going to see really is I'm looking for a Wednesday durable goods, pending home sales index, Thursday jobless claims. Um, and then Friday, we're going to get PCE, which is what the Federal Reserve is supposed to look at to really understand inflation. So we go on CPI, but I was informed that PCE is what they really look at. And then also the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. What I want to really get people to pay attention to was that on Friday, I believe, is the 26th. Powell's going to come out uh, and he's going to kind of talk about the Fed's plans and you know how they're going to continue to perceive monetary policy as we move forward. And I think that's going to be really interesting, especially because it's happening on a Friday, because it's going to give people the impression of where we think the market is going. And so with let me look at this again. With PCE coming out early Friday and with him speaking on Friday, uh, the market could open up bearish, especially if this PC number is higher than what's anticipated because uh, that's coming out at 830. So that's coming out an hour before the market opens up. Then if this comes out um, lower, right, then it could also mean that the market could open bearish because we're in a market to where good news sometimes can be perceived as bad news. So it's going to be really interesting how people are going to perceive these numbers and then what actions they're going to take leading into this particular talk. And I forgot what time this is. Most likely it's going to be in the afternoon. Going into the charts, looking at the SPY. Now, what do we see on the one year, on the daily? We talked about before. So let me zoom out. We had to move up and then we started to turn down. So it may see that 430 now may be our new resistance, but we want to continue to observe I will say that if we get up under this 417, so not a 417 is longer the resistance, it's the support. So if we look, if we zoom out, what we see is a sell-off, uh, leg up, leg back down, 
We brought back up to where we where we were previously. We sold all the way down. We came back up. We sold down. And then now we're looking like we may go back into another selling pattern. And what that will show you as we go to the two year is that we may just be grinding down, but in just a very slow, like kind of organized fashion. Or the, the market may find some legs and keep moving up. And I just want to encourage people to kind of play this by ear. Because this sell off has taken such a long period of time, there was money to be made on the upside. So if we go back to the one year, you know, there was money to be made on this move up. And so I just want to encourage people to look at the trend, not necessarily their narrative, because if you see that your narrative is opposite of the trend, it could cause a lot of pain for you because you got a position based on your narrative. But the trend isn't going in that direction. Also, looking at the QQQ, you're going to see pretty much the same thing. So it closed red on the week. We see the same thing. We see the move up and it start to sell off. And it was it was uh, down by almost two percent on Friday. And that's what we want to continue to observe. Going looking at the two year we talked about before. Sell down, move up, sell all the way down, move back up. Are we looking to move back down again? Or are we going to consolidate and move back up? However, if I'm thinking, well, we're going to move back down. And I get another three to four week trend of us moving up. I mean, I, I can't take a position based on that narrative if the trend is telling me something different. And I think that's one of the challenges. A lot of people get fixated on what they believe the overall market is going to do. They take a position based on that. And then when it doesn't happen, they can't admit, well, maybe I was wrong about my narrative or maybe I was just early, which can be true. What we're seeing with this market is a sell off is very gradual. It's not like 2020. If you go here, it's not like 2020 where they just essentially just tank the market. Right. This is a this is a tank. Right. Um, so that's what you got to understand is that the sell off here is a lot more gradual. And I think it's because of how high we were. They didn't want to go from 400 to, let's say, 300 in two weeks because people lost their mind. So what they did was they sold it off really gradually, allowed the market to recover. Shorts covered, sell it back down, allowed the market to recover. So that's kind of how they played it. So we could go leg down again. But I also think that it would be another gradual. Now, we could wake up and the market be down, you know, 4%. That could happen. And we want that's what we want to kind of understand with Powell speaking. And as they start to unwind their balance sheet, because they haven't really started yet, you're going to see those implications in the market over time. And that's something people want to look out for. So the market, it forecasts into the future for the day. However, as the Fed starts to unwind its balance sheet, you're going to see those changes in the market. You're going to see maybe the credit market starting to tighten up as time goes on. And that's something that we want to continue to observe. Therefore, we may not see a massive response to this policy until top of the year. It could go like that because that's only four months away. And that may be when after they start to unwind their balance sheet on a gradual, really they're going to just let everything expire. And they're not going to buy as much. Then we're going to start seeing how the market responds to that. And that's something that we want to observe. You know, I do think that it's a it's a chance we make it through midterms in the fourth quarter with things looking halfway decent. And it may be top of the year is where they start looking to pull the rug on people. Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.